in Jesus name it's taking time but it's coming give him a praise right there. Ah, welcome to the fight of your life. Look at him and say, welcome, welcome, welcome to the fight of your life. So the corridor between revelation and release is significant because many people quit because they cannot handle the pressure that comes from God revealing before God releases. Because he says it here, yeah. but he releases it there. Mm. He speaks in the present, but he gives in the future. Mm. And David then, who found himself in this corridor too, because God had anointed him as king when he was 16, revelation. Yeah. But he only got on the throne when he was 30, release. So he went through a, a 14 year corridor between revelation and release. He was anointed king as a teenager, but he didn't walk from the, from the sheep straight to the throne room. He went through 14 years hiding, living on the run, before his revelation became a reality. He had a 14 year corridor. It's taking time, but it's coming. In Psalms 23, then, uh, we're going to see David describing to us uh, what the corridor between revelation and release is like. That whole scripture is showing us what happens in the beginning. The Lord is my shepherd. That's revelation. And then in verse, the next verses, he's now showing you where he is. In verse 4, he's showing you that I am in the valley of the shadow of death. So the valley of the shadow of death is going to be a portrait. It's going to be a billboard to show us what the corridor between revelation and release is like. He says that it's a valley. So one thing you understand about a valley is a valley is a low point in your life. You're going to have to deal with low things, yes. And many people quit because they cannot deal with low things. When pursuing the release of your revelation, you have to learn how to deal with low things. You have to learn how to deal with a low income. You have to learn how to deal business person with a low amount of orders. It's just a value. You have to know how to deal with a low amount of interest from people. You have to learn how to deal with low responses from clients. It's just a valley. It's a low point in your journey. You have to learn how to deal with the lows. The lows. It's a valley. Going through the lows. You have to learn how to deal with low church attendance. It's a low, it's a valley. You're starting off in the valley. You're, you're, you're just walking in the corridor. You're not yet there where you're having high attendance. You have to go through the valley first to get to where you want to go. So you have to manage the pressure of low. You have to manage the pressure of low dating to no dating opportunities. You have to manage the pressures of being at a low point point where everything is just low your petrol is low the food in your fridge is low the, the pantry is low the account is low your wardrobe is low you wear the same clothes every day because your you, the tank on your on, on your in your wardrobe is low can i get an amen for somebody here and then when you're going through the lows of life, then you begin to have to deal with uh, what happens now to you is you begin to experience low energy. Where you have a low drive, you have low self-belief. Because when you're in a low point, you have low self-confidence. You don't believe in yourself. You're doubting yourself now. You're unsure about who you are and where you're going. Because you're at a low point in your life where you're continually with rejection mm -hmm. and you're going through the what is known as the closed doors test because every leader every entrepreneur every father every mother has to learn how to deal with closed doors yes. you have to learn how to manage doors being slammed shut in your face as you're getting
getting there, somebody closes the door. Yes. You want to get your child in that school, they close the door. Amen. You want to get that job, they close the door. Amen. You want to get a loan, but they close the door. Amen. You're trying to start your business, but everybody is closing doors. It's just a closed doors test that comes by walking through the valley. It's a low point in your life. You have to learn how to manage closed doors. Don't be discouraged when doors are closing in your face. And secondly then, he tells us that uh, it's a valley that is uh, that has a shadow cast over it. He tells me that the corridor, not only is it a low place, but it's a dark place where I can't see how things are going to work out. Uh, have you ever been in a place where you just can't see how things are going to work out? You're just in the dark. You're in a terrible place where you can't see where your next money is coming. You can't see where you can't see where your next deal is coming. You can't see where your next breakthrough is coming. You can't you, you're just in a dark place. It's a valley of a shadow. There's a it's a dark place. You just can't see how how am I going to pay this low baller? You can't see how things are going to work out. And when the shadow is over you, you can't see how things are going to come together. It's taking time, but it's coming. But uh, but the interesting thing about a shadow then is a shadow is just an obstruction of light. It means that there's an object standing between you and the light. A shadow is different from darkness because darkness means that there's the absence of light. But a shadow is, is a shadow is light that is obstructed. The light is there, but it's just being blocked. Darkness means that there is no light, which means that there is no hope. But a shadow means that the light is there, but it's just being blocked. If I was in the darkness, I would kill myself. I thank God that it's just a shadow. There's something blocking what's supposed to come my way. But if I hang in there and I believe God, I'm going to remove the mountain that's standing between me and my blessing. The light is there. The breakthrough is there. The money is there. The clients are there. The contracts are there. The people are there. They're just being blocked by a demonic system. So when you pray and you fast, you break Shambarada Shab. The light is just being blocked. If the light wasn't there, you'd lose your mind. It's there. It's just a shadow. It cannot harm you. Look at your neighbor and say, it's taking time, but it's coming. Oh, I can't see the light right now, but I know the light is there. I can't see the money right now, but I know it's there. I can't see the blessing right now, but I know it's there. You never leave me in the dark. I'm just in the shadow. This is not darkness, and I've come to tell the devil, let there be light in my life. Let there be light in your business. Let there be light in your marriage. Let there be light in that hospital. It's not darkness. It's just a shadow. And I've come to tell the devil in Johannesburg, in Igoli, Buddha, Puma, Samaya, get out because I gotta get my blessing. It's taking time, but I know that it's coming. Look at your neighbor and say something is coming my way. And finally then, the third component, he says, it's a valley of the shadow of death. The third component is, you're in the corridor, you're going to deal with death. Because you're in a valley, you're in a low place, where there is darkness, you're going to feel like your dream is about to die. It shall seem like you're going to bury your dream. And every entrepreneur, every pastor, every leader has to contend with the threats of death. On their dream there's gonna be a death threat but the devil cannot fulfill his death threat because I know that he killed my Savior 2,000 years ago but my Savior rose again so even if he kills your business it's 
going to get up again. Even if it kills your marriage, it will get up again. You've got resurrection power. The devil can't kill your anointing. He can't kill your church. He can't kill your money. He can't kill your business. He can't kill your children. He can't kill your husband. He can't kill your grandfather. He can't kill anything because you've got resurrection power in your life. It will rise again in the name of Jesus. And sometimes your dream has to die because the Bible tells us that unless a seed dies, it abides alone. So when your seed, my goodness, I feel God in here, when your dream dies, it's not going to be alone. When it comes out, it's coming out with backup. It's coming up with chummies. It's coming up with connections. It's coming up with networks. It's coming back with maturity. It's coming back with wisdom. Your dream will make a comeback. Say it's taking time, but it's coming. So the difficulty of the corridor of revelation comes down to dealing with the time factor. The problem then I have with revelation is all about managing the time between revelation and release. What do I do when revelation is taking time to manifest? That's the whole problem. That's when many people give up because they are believing for something that's taking time. Now, so when the promise of God is revealed by God, the 